Good morning, everyone. I am Holly Celliano, and today I have David Roberts, and he is the Chief Continental Marshal on the East Coast for the Republic. Welcome, David. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's an honor. So why don't you tell the audience what Chief Continental Marshal is, because most people are not familiar with that. Well, a Continental Marshal is a uh, peace officer operating under constitutional law. Uh, they are an international uh, peace force acting more in a diplomatic capacity under the Universal Postal Union uh, Authority. And uh, our job is to uh, maintain uh, the peace. And uh, if uh, a sovereign, a sovereign elector is uh, harmed by a de facto government, it's our job to uh, go in and uh, present a habeas corpus in, uh, in our authority and have the uh, have, try to get the people out of jail, have them removed from jail under our custody. And uh, that's just one ap, uh, aspect of what we do. The other thing, one of the other things that we do uh, is to uh, provide education and to uh, make sure that the assemblies, the lawful assemblies on the land are uh, remaining in that capacity and they haven't turned into a gang or into uh, uh, or operating outside of the law of the Constitution. Wonderful. So I know you were on Ann Bander still probably about a week and a half ago, and you were talking about the Republic. So I'd like you to address the audience, um, what you shared with her for those that didn't hear that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, the Republic for which we stand is the form of government that our founding fathers gave us 240 years ago. Uh, that, that form of government has been usurped over basically over 200, 220 years. Uh, the de facto international bankers, Vatican monarchy has systematically uh, uh, repressed the Republic and instituted a democracy and uh and now we the people uh through uh education and awareness have uh reinstituted the republic and we have gone uh, the organization called the republic for the united states of america dot org uh back in uh 20 uh, 2009 did the work did all the heavy lifting to get uh, the Republic recognized, that's the, the Republic of the United States of America, to be recognized internationally through the treaties that our founding fathers created 240 years ago. And uh, that has been done, and the international um, um, countries, I'm not gonna say the UN, but I know the UN was involved uh, in The Hague and organizations like that stood up and recognized us as a republic of the United States of America. And what your current government that you're facing right now, the, the oppression that you're uh, witnessing is a, a private corporation manipulated by the international bankers. And uh, that private corporation is in liquidity right now and doesn't exist. And uh, all aspects of that government has no bearing upon you, the man or woman. Now, listen to my vocabulary. I didn't say person. I said man or woman. And as a man or woman, you're not bound by this private corporation with their fake and uh, corporate law and their corporate policies because it doesn't apply to you as a man or woman. Uh, but under the Republic, you are recognized as a man or woman and uh, under the under the law of God. And... Uh, we are trying to stand up all the states at the moment. And so the, uh, the Republic for the United States of America has combined with another organization called the Republic with a K. And now we're unified on that front and uh, we're starting to get the states to stand up. And uh, the requirement for the state to become 
recognized in the Republic is to go back to the Northwest Ordinance of uh, 1787 and a review of what it would what the requirement was for a state to become a state. And that has to be reinstituted in many states. It has to be done uh, from the get go because after 1871, those of you are aware that the uh, federal government sold out to the international bankers and incorporated everybody across the nation. And so any state that was becoming a state after 1871 is a corporate franchise of the uh, corporation, the United States of America, Inc. And they're not lawful states. And so these states are going to be, have to be established under the Northwest Ordinance, under the laws of the Northwest Ordinance. So basically what that comes down to is 36,000 people stand up in each state uh, and you have your lawful body, which means you have your governor, secretary of state, attorney general, uh, congressmen, your justices, uh, all those things are in place. Now, what we're trying to do is have placeholders for these different states, like the governor, secretary of state, and they're just interim positions until lawful elections can be held. And that's approximately 120 days after your state stands up. Now, Tennessee is the first state in the union to have stood up under the Republic. And they have given notice and uh, maximum of law, if you don't give notice, then it doesn't exist. So they have lawfully given the de facto government of Tennessee notice that the de jure government is present. And under the laws, uh, which was cited by Justice Scalia in a uh, court decision called USA versus uh, Williams, uh, case 50, I believe it's 502 in 1992, stated in the um, majority opinion that when uh, a de jure uh, grand jury stands up, the de facto has to leave. And that applies to our government also. When, a, when the de jure government uh, appears, and makes notice, gives notice, the uh, de facto has to leave, not vacate. They have to get out of their chair and leave their positions because they're just placeholders, because they're unlawfully in those positions. So how so, is Tennessee able to stand up? Uh, what, what did they do that they were able to stand up that the other states still need to stand up? Well, the other states aren't aware of the requirements to stand up under the Northwest Ordinance. And uh, what Tennessee did, they started, uh, I'm gonna say three years ago, maybe it was longer, five years ago. And they started to do the, the uh, legwork in order for this, the state to become de jure. And that's, uh, they have to establish uh, finance, uh, economy, health. Um, there, there's several sectors of the government that has to be put in place prior to uh, the state actually standing up, as well as 36,000 36, people. Well, Tennessee's got more than that in their state, obviously, at this point in time. So they had to uh, uh, create um, assemblies. Uh, these are called committees of safety and uh, correspondence. And they, uh, each county, or township that stands up and becomes de jure, that population is included in that count. So as a county, uh, I mean, you only need several counties before you have the, you know, especially in a, a populated uh, like Nashville or somewhere like that, uh, you would hit your numbers real fast. But uh, what you have to do uh, correctly and lawfully is go back to when your state like for instance, Tennessee became a state, how many counties were uh, created just before the state became a state. And I believe Tennessee only had three counties. They only needed three counties. That's called an in, uh, um, uh, interim de jure ship. And, uh, but now that the state is established, now they have to get 66% 
you know, one or two thirds of the state to be de jure, to be actually full, full, completely de jure. And uh, so they're in, they're what we call an interim de jure ship okay. because they did, they did the basic work. So they stood up, they gave notice to mm -hmm. the de facto government there. And I don't think they vacated. So what do they do? No, they're in negotiations. They're thirty. They're in a thirty-day uh, um, term of uh, of transition between the uh, de facto government leaving and the uh, de jure government coming into play. Really, wow! Mm -hmm. So this needs to be done in every state. Correct. Okay. Every state, and the sooner you guys stand up, each state stands up. Um, the Nasara package that everybody keeps hearing about, the uh, um, Jasara, Nasara, uh, those packages are not going to be instituted until your state uh, for, forms under a republic, because the uh, powers to be that's going to release that money to the people, uh, they want to make sure it's going to go to the people and not, not end up in the corporate pockets of the uh, international bankers. So I know a lot of people are under the impression um, that Donald Trump has already established the Republic. So can you give clarity on that? If um, people think they, they've been saying out there, he's the 19th president of the Republic. Um, they think he's running a, a Republic behind the scenes. And here you're saying the Republic is being put together and um, needs each state to stand up. So could you just give clarity on that? Yeah, um, Trump cannot be part of the Republic. And here's the reason why, and this is the illusion. And I'm gonna dispel the illusion is that he was and is a de facto president. And because of that, no de facto officers can come into the Republic. But he could be voted as a Republic president, correct? He can, but he's not going to be the 17th. Okay. Well, there's a lot of, you know, rumor news out there that people get very confused by what's being done and what's being said. So there's so much confusion around all of this. Absolutely. And that's deliberate. Yes. It's called, it's called a diversion. One of the things that's going on right now is there's a power grab uh, happening. It's not just one faction. There's many factions out there that are trying to do a power grab on the United States of America because the uh, corporation of the United States, Inc. doesn't exist any longer. So there's a vacuum. And uh, so there's a lot of organ a lot of uh, factions out there that are trying to fill that void. And here's here's what 99% of your constituents don't understand is that we need a republic. And a republic is a bottom up organization and the power comes from the individual committees to safety. They don't come from a centralized government. There's many factions out there that want, that don't want that because they can't control. And they want, all they want to do is replace the current governments in place and keep the centralized government and, and just, you know, change the rules, give us a little bit more freedom. But they want to continue with the manipulation and continue with the industrial, military industrial complex. And that all has got to be vanquished. All of that's got to be uh, gone. And uh, we need, uh, and this is worldwide, guys. This is not just the United States. The United States is just setting the pace for the rest of the world. And what, by setting the republic for which it stands, given to us by our founding fathers, and we institute the uh, committees of safety at the county levels, which, by the way, was the was the government our founding fathers were using our 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 delegates that went to continental congress were delegates okay they weren't elected they were delegates sent by the committees of safety to represent the communities and they and they brought forth the the laws but they couldn't move 
until they went back to their committees of safety and got approval. And that's the way our government is supposed to be run, guys. It's not supposed to be this centralized powerhouse with with uh, uh, all these controlled senators with lifetime, uh, uh, you know, jobs as senators. No, you're controlled by the committees of safety at the local level. And when you're not doing your job, they can pull you back and, and replace you with another delegate. That's how it works, because the people that are in the assembly are the sovereign electors. They are the electoral college, not this fiction that currently exists under the board of elections. That's all, that's all propaganda false to support the international bankers, okay? A voluntary militia, that's, that's all part of it. Uh, it's called an involuntary militia, an assembly, and, and a common law grand jury. Those are the three branches of the government that none of us has been taught. No, no our, our public school system doesn't want any of us to know any of this. This actually needs to all be taught in the public school system so that exactly. we, are, we grow up with this knowledge and understand that we the people hold the power and everybody accountable that is in power for all these states and the federal government. Exactly. I mean, if we all understood this, I mean, we were taught this in school, God. there would not be any tyranny. No. We wouldn't be in the mess we're in today. That's for exactly. Sure. But they exactly. deliberately kept it from us and kept us, you know, none of this is taught to us. And then even what's out there, you know, that they do teach us, how do we even know it's true, what they want us to know? Exactly. That it's all propagandized and, and distorted and uh, uh, manipulated and spellcast and all that. Yes. Okay. So Tennessee has stood up. We need other people in the rest of the states to join and get involved and get in leadership positions. Correct? That's, it. That's absolutely correct. Um, we're... Uh, conducting a campaign right now and we're getting ready uh on the 28th of uh this month we're going to be in ohio and uh it's going to be a evening an event at a church uh i can give you that information uh and we're requesting all buckeyes that want a republic form of government in their state and they want to remove this oppression of, of michael dewine and his uh, uh, communist uh, propaganda machine that he has currently in place. Um, we're asking all, everyone, every man, every every woman to be there. Um, uh, Eric uh, Dingus, myself, and um, uh, David Mook from uh, Michigan, and Tom Bushman. He's the governor of the state of Ohio under the uh, interim, he's the interim government under the Republic, and we're going to be there. And we're going to talk about 18 Exodus, which is the procedure and process for the people, you, man, every man and woman, to stand up and make claim as uh, a republic. And uh, this is this is time now that stop eating the popcorn, stop lounging in the in your uh, lounger, watching. Uh, CNN television, it's time to get up, time to go to work. And this is now the time. And then on the 29th and 30th, we will be in Michigan in Macomb County, uh, north of uh, Detroit, and we'll be delivering the same message. And uh, there we're gonna be instituting committees of safety. So there's several committees of safety there. They're just starting up and we're gonna be, uh, uh, educating them and uh, uh, bringing them up to speed and uh, getting everything to happen. So, yeah. So if people want to get involved, I know I have been posting this in my rooms. You can email D-A-M-O-O-K, the number one and two at gmail.com and tell him you want to get involved in whatever state you're in. And right. just pledge your support to do what you need to do. There's so many different positions and it's up to we, the people, to take our country back. 
Yeah, guys, it's us. It's us. It's not, you know, don't look for the white hats. Don't look for the, we, we are the white hats. Don't look for, the military is, cannot move forward. It's uh, posse comitatus. They cannot enter. Uh, it has to be done at the sheriff's level, at the county level. All this is at the county level. And, uh, and it starts with the committee of safety and then holding the public officials in your county uh, accountable for lawful oaths. Article six, clause two and three. They have to have lawful oaths and they have to be bonded. And if they're not, if they're not properly bonded, that means each public servant has to have a lawful bond. Not, not a blanket policy issued by the county. They have to have a personal bond that they personally purchased and they put up an asset for them to do this. And I'm not just talking about the, the elected officials. I'm talking about all officials, the health board, the EPA, the, the, the inspector that comes out and inspects your septic system. All of them are to have oaths of office, all of them. In the in the Article Six, you read Article Six. It doesn't say elected officials. It says all officials. So and that, go ahead. Here's another misnomer that goes around because everybody keeps saying the military is the only way. Um, now you just said no. So can you can you give a little bit more information on that so people have clarity? Yeah. Under uh, Posse Comitatus, uh, the sheriff can deputize all the citizens of his county. And if a lawful assembly has been assembled, uh, he can deputize all those members of that assembly, which is the sovereign electors, to uh, help him, assist him in the policing of the county. The only drawback is that 99% of the sheriffs in this country are unlawful and illegal positions held by uh, de facto uh, people that, uh, have, that have have no lawful oaths of office. So it's our job as committees of safety to go in and hold these uh, sheriffs, because that's where it starts at, guys. These sheriffs lawfully uh, with oaths of office, and if they don't, then make a move lawfully through uh, administrative process I can t I can walk you through that process to remove them from office. And it's real simple. You don't need a court of law. You don't need a lawyer. You don't need any of those. You know, first of all, lawyers don't work for you. They work for the court. The court is totally corrupt. It's uh, it, it's a king's court for the crown. It does not represent us. There is no remedy in that court. So uh, you have to work outside of the court in a court of record. And I can walk you through all that. So for these sheriffs that you were saying 98% are not lawful, um, to get rid of them or to put in a lawful sheriff, there's remedies that we can do without going to the court. Correct. Well, first of all, you need to go to them. Um, uh, well, the first step is to get their oaths of office and find out if it's a lawful oath. And now you're going to find out 99% of them don't have lawful oaths. Okay. Because their oath is to, to be to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of your state. And that's the orga organic Constitution. And the organic Constitution is 1777, or I'm sorry, 1787 of the Fed, and then whatever your uh, the first constitution that was created in your state. Um, if they didn't take an oath to those constitutions, they took an oath to the corporation, and that uh, th that's fraud. That they're so, violated the Article Six of the Constitution. How do you find the original constitution for your state, and how do you find the constitution prior to 1787? Because from what I understand, nobody knows where that constitution is. Uh, believe it or not, uh, just do DuckDuckGo. It'll come up. Okay. For the states and for the yeah. constitution. I mean, it's, it, it may not come up right away, but uh, if you dig down several pages, you'll, you'll find the organic 
version. Okay. And then you wanted to go and talk about um, what was going on in Ohio with the, the septics. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, here's a perfect example of how to enforce your claim against the fraud of the cor of the de facto corporation. Um, in Lorain, Ohio, uh, which is up by Lake Erie, uh, and this is happening all across the state, not just in Lorraine, but uh, the health board in Lorraine uh, imposed a law and uh, which is unlawful. And uh, what they're doing is they're calling it a fee, but imposing it as a tax. And the tax is, is unlawful because it lacks representation, proper representation, because it wasn't brought forth as a referendum before the people to allow the people to decide if that was a tax that they were willing to pay. And so what they did, uh, and this the, the corporation, the corporate government's famous for doing this stuff. Um, they, they did it with the 16th Amendment with the uh, uh, IRS and uh, Federal Reserve Bank, which is a private corporation of a banking cartel. And they waited uh, 20 years to institute it. It was passed in uh, 1913. And then in 1933, they stole all our assets. In uh, March 9th, 1933, that's a perfect example. That's why I'm quoting that. And uh, so in um, 2015, our corporate state legislature passed a law saying that uh, the counties could assess a fee for septic tank inspections. Well, the, here's the history. Uh, up until this year, septic tank maintenance was done by septic tank companies, and they would come out as needed and pump out your septic system, and they would fill out an inspection report and send it into the health department. And we've done this for over a hundred years and there's no flaw, no, no problem. You know, it happens. It's good. Now, all of a sudden, the state wants to, uh, well, this goes all the way to the federal government, by the way, and it doesn't stop at the state. This is a centralized communistic system. The, uh, the state imposed this law and says that now the health department is going to conduct inspections. And they're going to send out a person every year, once a year, to inspect your septic system. Well, in Lorraine, Ohio, there's 22,000 septic systems. They only have three inspectors. And uh, they it's virtually impossible for them to do 22,000 every year. And we asked the director of the health department in May, and he said, no, it's not our intention. We, we have no intention inspecting all the septic systems, we're only going to inspect the ones that need to be inspected. I go, okay, but you're charging a fee. And he goes, yeah. And I said, so you're charging a fee for no service. And he stops and he goes, uh, well, yeah. I said, well, you can't do that because uh, if, if you are not going to pro provide a service, then you can't charge a fee. That's fraud. That's theft. And uh, and I said, and it's extortion because the government's forcing it. And uh, and it's bar tree and, and it's denial of our unalienable rights. It's a breach of public trust and you can't enforce it. Well, then in our investigation, the Committee of Safety conducted an investigation and we found out that they're appointed. All the health board is appointed and they're appointed by another organization that is all appointed. And that was the district uh, advisory council. And the district advisory council is another layer of corporate government insulating the, uh, in the different branches of the government from the people. And the people have no access to these, uh, these, these people because of, they're all being appointed by the, most likely it started with the governor and then broke down from there. And all of these are deep state. As when you have layers of government with no uh, oversight by the people, this is a deep state operation. And this is, you're having a deep state government in your backyard and you don't even know it. 
So in our investigation, we found out the uh, District Advisory Council appoints these individuals to be uh, on the county health board, and they are not required to have an oath of office. Okay, where in the law does it say that? You know, this is tyranny, just plain blatant a ty a tyranny. And so we brought this to the attention of, of the health department and we asked them to correct their, uh, you know, we pointed out in the constitution, which is the superior law of the land, not Ohio revised code. So we pointed that out to them and we said, we'll be back in 30 days. And in 30 days, nothing changed. So we uh, gave them notice three days to evict or we are going to bring pro, uh, prosecution against them for uh, uh, committing tyranny and treason upon the people. And uh, along with the whole long laundry list of infractions, including extortion and uh, uh, threat. And, uh, and what they're going to do is if you don't pay the fee, and, and here's the other side of it, they're charging three years in advance. And the fee is $40 per year. But they're charging three years up front. So they want $120 paid up front, paid by the 30th of April, which generates for the county $2.6 million. Now, they have yet to explain why they need $2.6 million. They have yet to explain where the money, the $2.6 million, is earmarked for. And uh, they have failed to explain what is the ramification of the inspection. They have failed to explain that. Uh, what if your septic system has failed the inspection? Can they, can you, is your septic system grandfathered or can they condemn your property? And then if they condemn your property, can they confiscate your property because it's condemned mm -hmm. and they can evict you from the property? These are all questions that need to be answered that the health board absolutely refuses to answer. And this is just one county in one state and with all the counties and all the states, there's so many things going on that if we're not privy to knowing the laws and the rules and these, these taxes or fees get implemented, people just go along with it and just figure, okay, you know, just pay pay it. But well, that's the uh, that's the first uh, because we tried to rally the people, and the majority says, "Oh, it's only forty dollars. I'll just pay it." I go, "No, you don't understand. When you pay that forty dollars, you have consented to a tacit contract mm -hmm. of acceptance, and now they can impose their law, their rules upon you with no no uh, reprisal." That's why, you know what, people need to wake up to the laws, the real laws. They need to wake up to what our constitutional rights are and become active in changing all of this. Because if we don't change it now and we don't start dialing back all this stuff, they're just going to tax us to death and keep implementing more and more. And before you know it, we're in a tyrannical government and that's where well, we're headed. You know, right now it's forty dollar fee, and they got a three year advance, which generated two point six million dollars. At the end of three years, what stops them to say, okay, well now it's a hundred dollars, right? Right. Or two hundred dollars, right? I think you know a lot of this probably is starting because if you have a septic system, you don't, aren't paying a monthly fee for the sewer fee. That bingo. So, but think think about this. I mean, uh, they also now they're implementing inspections. Now they're implementing uh, what's going to stop them from uh, now putting in a countywide sewer system. Right. And if you don't want to put your septic, or you know, you still want to remain on the septic system, that they come in and and condemn your property, mm -hmm. and then, and we're. Out in Lorraine, there's, you know, 200 acre farms out there, you right. know, 50 acre farms. They turn those into suburbia because now they have a count. They have a countywide sewer system. And that's what it's all about, guys. It's all about 
micronizing and confiscating land uh, for the purpose of uh, 15 minute cities. And Lorraine, uh, the location of Lorraine is 30 minutes outside of Cleveland, which is a major metropolitan area. And it instantaneously with sewers, the builders, the uh, you know housing developers will come in and they'll develop large tracts of land and put you know a thousand homes on those you know 50 acres. That's what it's all about. That's where they're headed. That's that's ten, probably a ten-year pack, a ten-year uh, goal. Right. So, David, do you have any final words that you want to um, give the listeners? Yeah. I do. Okay. I understand your unalienable rights. Get involved and make a difference. And if you don't have an assembly in your local area, then create one. Get in touch with me. It takes uh, five to seven people to start an assembly. And within 45 days, you'll have 50 to 100 people in that assembly. And this is what's got to happen. We got to go back to what our founding fathers gave us, and we have to enforce the law. And the law is do no harm, do not trespass. If you have not harmed anyone, you have not trespassed, you have not broken the law. All those books, all those libraries are law. It's all fake law. It's all fake. There's no need for any of it. It's just control and manipulation over the people. And how do people get in touch with you? All right. Um, one way to reach me is through a website called Awaken and Unite with an E dot com slash Republic. Uh, you can find out how to start an assembly. There's videos there. And then there's uh, videos on uh, the history of the United States, the true history of the United States. Blow you, they'll blow you out of your socks, the things that you'll find there. You can also reach me by email at n. M T Nancy Michael Tom Roberts R O B E R T S number one at gmail.com or you can call me at 330 412 1919. But uh, don't call because I won't answer. Uh, send me a text telling me who you are, identify yourself and what your question is or what your concern is, and I'll call you back. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Everybody, it's time to stand up and to get involved and get this country back on the right footing. Thank you, David. Yeah, thank you. God bless everyone. God bless to you. Uh, and thank you for this great and glorious opportunity. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.